but it does tie in. It does tie in well. The Devil's Hand, Jack Carr, the author of that, is a retired Navy SEAL. Because one of the other things that gripped us throughout this country was fear. I think for, for a lot of people are still freaked out, don't want to go outside. So in tying it in with the devil's hand and with your SEAL training, if someone were to come up to you as a retired Navy SEAL, like, what advice do you have on dealing with fear? What would you tell them? Well, it, it, when we think about that in terms of this last year, let's look at it in those, in those terms. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can go about having, having dealt and deal, dealing going forward. And really it's identifying what, cause that fear. So let's say, let's take it back to March of last year, April of last year. Were you worried financially about not having a job? Well, if you were, then what steps have you taken over this last year to fix that, to alleviate that fear? So it's not part of, it's not wasting bandwidth the next time something like this happens, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's a natural disaster, whether it's uh, civil unrest, no matter what it is, there has to be this foundation built so that you can adapt to those different changing problem sets and you can you can allocate bandwidth towards solving those problems that maybe you can't anticipate ahead of time but guess what we can anticipate well having this financial this financial foundation what else oh were you worried that going down to the to the supermarket they might not have some uh, you know they might not have any meat on the shelf or might the canned goods mm-hmm. might be all gone well guess what now's the time to take those lessons and apply them and uh, get some food Put that away, just so you know. So now you're not worried about that. Do you have a water filter? Were you worried that someone maybe wasn't going to be able to go in and you know keep the water on going to your house and you turn it on? Maybe it's uh, it, it it comes out all brown and nasty. Well, did you have do you have a water filter now? Do you have fire extinguishers? So the kids know how to use them. Does uh, uh does your babysitter know how to use them? So all those things that that came into your mind when you were in that situation, when you felt a little scared, a little apprehensive, uh, maybe not as prepared as one could have been uh, for the future. Well, guess what? Now's the time, actually we're past the time, but uh, you can still uh, make some changes and you can still uh, be more prepared going forward so that when something does happen that you need to focus on uh, that you couldn't have anticipated ahead of time, all your bandwidth is on solving that problem rather than, hey, what's my family gonna eat tomorrow? Hey, do we have enough water here? Like what's good, oh gosh, this is like all those sorts of things. And there's a couple of different ways to frame it because as parents, our kids, they're noticing what's going on, not just by listening, but by our body language, by our tone of voice. So they could either have mom and dad in the kitchen, you know, whispering, like seeing that worry, sensing that worry. Uh, and they're going to feel that. And they're going oh, to have, have a dinner tomorrow night. Why are mom and dad so worried? What, what are they talking about his job? Was this so they're having all these questions? Or you can be in that same situation and bring those kids in and be like, hey, you know what? We were not as prepared as we could have been as a family for this. But guess what we're going to do going forward? You know, X, Y and Z. And hey, let's go in the backyard. We're going to build a little fire in our barbecue. And I'm going to show you how to put it out with this fire extinguisher so that now you know how to do that. and You know where it is. And and so you're using all these things as, as, you know, the teachable moments, which is the, you know, what what people like to use. But it's true. Um, They are. And you can. So just the exact same situation, just the way you handle it can be so different for all of those around you, not just your kids, it could be for neighbors, other people in, in your circle as well. So uh, so the most important thing is to make those changes. And we have a great year last year to look back on. And you can go and identify where where you were, what you were doing, when you started worrying about your job, when you started worrying about how much food you had in the house, uh, and whatever it might be. Well, now's your time to make those changes. Is that how you dealt with, you know, to get specific, is that how you, because you said adaptability, is that how you approach war situations? Because now we're elevating to life and death. So is that sort of, okay, you go in, you fight the battle, you, and you were a sniper, so you do what you need to do, and then you say, okay, you do an after action report, in other words. Right. That's right. You come right back. The first thing you do is a hot wash. So you bring everybody together and you talk about what went right, what went wrong, how you can do it better next time. Uh, you know, no, no one's talking about rank. No one's thinking about those sorts of things. You're just getting it all out on the table because that's what you owe that team and you owe the people that are coming next uh, to pass those lessons on to them. So they're not learning these less same lessons in blood. So you come back, you do that hot wash um, at that tactical level hot wash. And then as a leader, you take that and you put it on paper and then you have that after action report that you can then send out to other people. So people that are get back in the United States getting ready to come over are like, oh, look what we need here. We need these kind of breaching charges because, you know, on this kind of a wall, you know, X, Y, Z didn't work quite quite as well. So whatever that is, you're passing that off to make us all stronger 